There was something about this that I'm like, oh, it's cake. And we all know how fat kids love cake. And I am that fat kid. My mom makes the absolute most superb cake in the world. And I'm talking with homemade buttercream frosting nonetheless. Like, don't get it twisted. I had the good shit with the good shit on top. Like, mm -hmm, my mama makes a cake. And hello, beautiful people. Welcome back. So in today's video, we are going to be diving into the first quarter of 2020 and talking about 10 palettes that I am glad I did not purchase. This is a video that I did at the end of 2019, maybe a few months ago. But in that video, I kind of took all of 2019 and like lumped it all together. And I had a few requests from you guys to maybe make it more regular and maybe lump it together or do it once per quarter. So I thought that we would try that idea out, see if you guys like it. Of course, you can let me know down below. Um, but before we get into the video, I want to mention just a couple of things because obviously the overall like setup and and the way the camera is it looks a little bit weird right now and that is because for those of you that don't follow me over on Instagram I have been trying so hard to get this entire room finished and to go in with my new setup and just get everything organized and so I had to kind of pan the camera very differently because all around me all the shelves and like everything is just piled high with a bunch of stuff so I apologize if things look a little bit weird but for today's video it's actually going to work out because I'll be able to put the um, images up on the screen for you right there but just so you guys know there is a reason it looks funky and hopefully it will return to normal relatively soon I'm just working on getting everything organized and then of course you guys will be getting those um, collection hauls and organizing hauls as far as how I have it set up and all of that so please subscribe and stay tuned because that is happening and then just because it does have the potential to impact not only this video but also Friday's video um, I want you guys to know I messed up my shoulder and I'm not sure if it's my shoulder my neck a lymph node in my neck I'm really not entirely sure but for right now I can barely move this arm and my neck and that's why this video as well as Friday's video might not be an application style where I'm physically putting my makeup on um, just because it's hard enough to try to get ready without using like this and moving a ton and I can only imagine trying to do that like on camera with the lighting and then this and can you see that and just trying to move my body and stuff it's just way too much so if things are a little bit weird for a while whether it's background this that the other I apologize but hopefully I will be back up and running and movable in no time but anyways, I don't want to waste any more time on that. Let's go ahead and get into today's video. And for that, we're going to start off with Pat McGrath. And this was their Mothership 7 Divine Rose Palette. But for me, I think the issue was that when I looked at this palette, I didn't feel like a like a, a craving for it, I guess is the only way I can think to describe it. And lately, I kind of have this feeling that if I don't crave a palette or like really truly desire it or like want to play with it, if I don't look at it and go, oh, I can see an eye look with that, then I, I feel like it, it's not something something I should be considering purchasing. And when I looked at this, it did have a few shades that almost got me. Because Pat McGrath, let me tell you, okay, she is a master at putting together palettes that they have like one or two shades that you're just like, ooh, like I can't live without that. There could be eight neutrals, but those two other shades in there that like grab you by the heart and just pull you towards the finish line, those shades will get you every time. And in this palette, they had three of those shades. There was a glittering platinum, a golden rose duochrome, and the gleaming golden platinum. And all of those shades I thought were so so, so beautiful. Again, the, the glimmer, the sparkle. I think the follow-up to that is not only do they look beautiful in swatch, but because I am so familiar with Pat McGrath's shadows, it was such a hard one for me to turn down because I'm like, oh my god, those are going to be so beautiful. They're going to be so like over the top. They're going to work well. They're going to press in. I could use them with a the glitter glue. I could use them without and like drape the eyelid in them. Like, I know how well these work. And I think for me, that was probably the hardest part. Ultimately, at the end of the day, given that the price of these larger palettes for her is $125, I'm glad I didn't get it because I feel like this is a palette that I could maybe not so much dupe out but a palette that I won't necessarily miss and again just given you know how I'm trying to look at palettes and look at makeup more so now I feel like I definitely made the right call but those shades in there oh my god those glittery sparkly just like extra special shades <gasps> they get me every time I'll tell you what Pat McGrath if you could just put like maybe 10 15 20 of those extra sparkly beautiful platinum whatever shades you put those all in one palette that is a palette that I would buy y'all I tell you what that much magic all in one place it would be like going to Hogwarts it would be like being at platform nine and three quarters running into the brick wall and realizing that you're not just an idiot that literally ran into a brick wall like it would be truly magical and that I would be on board for but for this I'm glad I'm glad that I decided against it all right so next up something we're going to talk about briefly I don't think we need to spend a lot of time here but we have the Huda Beauty uh, mini pastel palettes those little nine pan palettes and for me this was a collection that I really really liked the look of at first like I was 
was almost on board, went to the website, added them to cart, like I got all the way to the checkout. And ultimately I decided against it because these are $29 a piece. For me, I think the problem is that when I look at these, I really feel like I would only get a lot of use out of maybe one to two of the palettes. I'm the type of person in personality that I am going to want to purchase all three palettes together to have them as a set. And even though that makes like logically no sense, because if you're not gonna, you know, like use it, love it, and thoroughly enjoy it, why would you buy it? Um, I can't explain it. I just, when they're released like this, I really have the desire to purchase all three, to play with them, and kind of intertwine all three looks and shades and that whole feel. I guess for me, what it came down to with this is I looked at it and I'm like, look, if you're gonna spend this much money on these palettes, like you need to have a clear vision. You need to have a clear, um, why are you buying it? Like, what is your thought process behind this? Because when I look at it, I do see beautiful looks and I see, you know, the, the light fluffy eye and the beautiful kind of Easter egg looking eye and all of that. But ultimately, like, given everything that you've got going on in this room right now and, and, you know, all the makeup you're going through and trying to organize and stuff, where do these fit in your collection? And when I kept thinking back to it, it wasn't so much that I had a dupe for them. It was just that I felt like at the time my collection wasn't missing them. And so I kind of put a pin in them. Like, you know what? I don't need them right now. They're not necessarily missing. But in the future, they'll be there. Like, if, if I decide later on I want them, I can just get them then. And after I kind of let that a first wave roll over me, I was fine and I really haven't looked back since. I still think they're pretty and I still think that I would use them. Like, don't get me wrong. I think they're really nice, you know, beautiful palettes. But for me, it was just more so like, nah, I don't, I don't need them right now and I can revisit them later. So I don't regret not buying them. Okay, so this next palette, I'm arguably like a little bit upset with myself that I ever even thought about it. Granted, it was for a fleeting second, but I am still a little bit embarrassed, okay? This is from Victoria Beckham Beauty, which you already know is gonna be expensive, but this was her new smoky eye brick in the shade silk that was like the little color combo and guys there here's what kills me about these okay I looked at this and I was like it's so basic it's so neutral it's so everyday but also I kind of love it for the same reason and as I'm sitting there looking at it I'm like mm, what do we think like should I shouldn't I and then I remembered like I got hit over the head by a damn spike baseball bat Paige this little palette this little palette that is the size of your hand it is $54 $54 okay I'm not saying that the quality is not good but $54 are you kidding me ow <gasps> Oh, I got my neck going. Damn. See, this is why I shouldn't do videos when, when I get passionate because for $54, absolutely not. And again, nothing to do with the quality, but I just couldn't get over like in my head as I was planning this video, I kind of debated, you know, do I be this honest? Like this is, this is a brutal honesty for me. Um, so should I openly admit that I almost did this? You know, it's, it's literally this big, like this big and it's got four shades in it. And I just, I, <laughs> I don't see the appeal. I think in the end, like, obviously I'm glad I didn't get it because even though I would totally use it, it's my color scheme, you know, it's it's a very easy breezy everyday type palette, but I did not need this. And I'll go one step farther. I'll double down and say, I don't know that anybody needs this, okay? For the price, for whatever, like there are so many other, even high-end expensive brands that you could get that they're just like, the quality is gonna be just fine. And I just, I don't understand the, the desire. I don't even understand within myself. Like it was such an almost impulse, like <gasps> type situation. And I just, I'm so glad I didn't give in. So it's short it's sweet, it's to the point, but my God, I'm glad I didn't buy that because I would have never let myself live that one down. I would have beat the piss out of myself for doing that. So I'm glad crisis averted, $54 that I got to keep moving on. All right, now this next palette that we have is from Urban Decay and this was their Wired palette. They came out with it, I wanna say within the last month, month and a half or so. It has 10 shades, they're all super bright, poppy, vibrant. And I think for me, the biggest draw with this palette because obviously if you watch my channel, you know I'm not really drawn to these colors right now. Like I don't wear a ton of super bright colors you're, you know, like a ton of over-the-top eyeshadow looks. I've just been way more neutral lately. And when I looked at this palette, it was nostalgia that got me. It was that like, <gasps> like, oh my God, this reminds me of when I first started putting on makeup. This reminds me of original Urban Decay, like the fun, the bright, the poppy, the I will admit almost going and verging on clown makeup that I used to wear. Like it gave me that strong sense of <gasps> like circa, you know, three, four years ago. And, and I think it was just such a like over the top kind of feeling inside myself where I was like, I need that palette. And after I thought about it, like Paige, why do you need that palette? I couldn't come up with one damn reason <laughs> that I needed that palette, but there was still a piece of me that was like, oh, I want it, I want it. And what I told myself is that, Paige, if you can go through your collection and you can find other bright shades, pull them out, and if you use them for even a week, just a week, and use these other bright shades, then you can buy this palette. 
Y'all, when I tell you, I didn't even get up off my ass to go look, okay? I was like, no. <laughs> you don't need to go look because you know you're not gonna wear them, you know you're lazy, and looking at this, all you're feeling is the emotion attached to it. And so I'm glad that I kind of like sat myself down and had like a little reality check because I definitely needed it. Um, ultimately, I'm glad I didn't buy it. I do think that the shades are pretty. It's very, you know, wired and electric, and if that's your sort of thing, um, I definitely, you know, I think it's cool. But like, for me, there's just no way. Like, I would have gotten no use out of this, and I'm glad that I had the the foresight to tell myself to just calm the hell down and stay seated because y'all it just it is I don't need it <laughs> Now for as much heat as I might get you guys, I almost bought this palette and I mean almost like I was ready at launch I kept track of the whole thing and that is none other than the stormy palette from Kylie cosmetics And I know I know okay the judgment is real. I feel it on myself I don't need your sass. I understand like Kylie cosmetics. Yes, they're a more expensive color pop and da 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 But this color story it spoke to me on like a spiritual level like I fell in love with these shades I thought they were so beautiful. It was so like perfectly done in in the realm of like where purple meets pink it has the sparkle it has a little depth but not too much it has the ability to be a nice light eye a deep eye like it I felt like it could just do so many things and out of all the palettes that I have talked about up until now this is the palette that almost just made me double down and like I have to have it I haven't bought Kylie cosmetics in years but I have to have this palette and ultimately if I'm being honest it's still one that like if it came on sale I might consider buying it because that's how much I really enjoy this color story the swatches like I love that it has that nice little orangey kind of peachy pop off to the side. I love that it has the pink sparkle. Like there's just so much going on for me with this palette that I do enjoy so much that I, I still struggle with it. Like ultimately I think it's okay that I didn't buy it, but I just need you to know like this girl, she almost did it. And if any of you bought it and you like it, please tell me down below because I just, I need to live vicariously. Okay. I need like a moment. I think the real shocker is that not only did I love it, I still love it just as much now as I did when it came out. I'm just saying that says a lot. Okay. Because a lot of these, like my feelings have kind of passed, but not this one. I still love this palette. I would wear it. It's beautiful. The only thing that deterred me is that I know that Kylie Cosmetics is like overpriced ColourPop, and it just kind of like, ugh, like it gets me a little. So I struggle, but it's so, oh my gosh, just so pretty. It's so pretty. All right, so this next one we can all just have a good laugh at. It's the Glam Light Cake Palette, and y'all, I'm gonna be dead ass honest with you. Almost bought this palette just because it looks like a cake, okay? Like, there was something about this that I'm like, ugh, it's cake, and we all know how fat kids love cake, and I I am that fat kid. I am that fat kid, okay? I was raised with the best cake. As you can imagine, my mom makes the absolute most superb cake in the world. And I'm talking with homemade buttercream frosting nonetheless. Like, don't get it twisted. I had the good shit with the good shit on top. Like, mm -hmm, my mama makes a cake. And I'm a cake queen. I'm a cake connoisseur. And when I saw this, I was just like, damn. All the shades are the colors of the sprinkles, so it's even got like that going on. Like, I was on board <laughs> for this palette. And again, the only reason that I didn't buy it is because the common sense kicked in and I was like, look, Paige, yes, the colors are beautiful. Beautiful. It has great looking shimmers like you're you could use this, but will you use this? I was like, no, I guess I won't use it But like I want the cake and then I was like, okay Well, if you want cake, just go get cake like you need to just fight your inner demons And if the fat kid wants cake, then just give her cake But she don't need to be buying a pelt that you can't eat. You're not gonna eat this This is not going to turn into cake. Okay, like you need to just get it together And so, you know, I, I kind of like snapped out of it I realized I'm not gonna get a lot of use out of it because again bold bright colorful type situation But y'all when I tell you the power and the persuasion of cake is real. Oh, it's real. Mm, it is so real and it was <laughs> yum. So does anybody else feel parched and they need cake? <laughs> anybody? Anybody? Just me? Okay. All right. So the next palette is the Ofra Cosmetics Glitch Baked Eyeshadow Palette retailed for $29. Um, and it's, it's a nine pan eyeshadow palette. They're all shimmers. And for me, what I fell in love with with this palette was the arrangement and like the vast color assortment all in one place of various shimmers. That's just something that I really love because not only do I like um, Ofra's formula when it comes to shimmers, they're really nice. They're super buttery, very similar to their highlights, which are amazing. But for me, it's not just the texture of it that I love, even though it's fantastic. I'm the type of person that loves to plan like a simple eye look, but also loves to have it be like super poppy and fun at the same time. And with palettes like this, it's just really easy to create like that mix and match feel where you already have a blush or a bronzer, sweep that through the crease, something all over the lid, done. You can take and do a neutral eye up top, maybe put one of those blue pops of shimmer on the inner corner on your lower lash line, done. Palettes like these 
these just make stuff like that go very easily, at least for me, because I like knowing that I have nine options. They're all in one place. They're colors that work together, but also work well on their own. So again, did I pick up this palette? No, and I'm not mad that I didn't get it. Like I'm actually, I'm kind of glad because I do have so many other options at my disposal, but I just want to put it out there. Like this one is one of those things where I didn't get it, but I could also see like a very valid use for it, at least in my eyes. How I can justify it, I don't know, but I really like it. It's a beautiful palette. Um, I'm just, I'm glad I didn't grab it because I really don't think I need it, especially right now. So next up, I have something from Stila. This was their Road Less Traveled palette. It's just an eight pan palette. And this one was a very fleeting desire because I think when, when you see it in pan, it's very like, ugh, like I would never use that. I'd never reach for it. It doesn't spark any sort of interest. Again, it doesn't make me hungry at all to use it. Then when I swiped over and I saw the swatches of it, the reason that I almost ended up going with this palette was just the um, almost like seasonal feel. Like this, when I looked at it, I said, oh my God, you know, it kind of gives me that vibe of like, we're going from summer where we have like that bright green, we have a little brightness and we're drifting into fall. And I can see, you know, really using these, these nice like shimmery reds and shimmery oranges and, and creating like that beautiful fall look. But at the end of it, after I sat on it, and of course, you know, I made myself wait, I didn't buy it right away. Um, I was really glad that I didn't because now looking back at this palette, I know that just based off of how I do my makeup, there, there's like probably three or four shades in here I never would have been able to use anyways just because I don't like how they look on my skin tone. This just isn't the most cohesive color story that it could be, so I'm definitely glad I didn't get it. I can see, you know, why I kind of thought about it for a second, but I'm glad I didn't get it because I think in the end, I think I would have been very upset with myself and very annoyed because I would be looking at a palette where maybe half the shades I really like and the other half or more than half, I literally have no use for. So I'm glad I didn't get it, um, but I, I could see the initial appeal. I'm just, I'm just glad I made myself wait. Now the next two items are going to highly, highly appeal to my sense and desire for generational fun and awareness because the first one is the Salt and Peppa Hot, Cool, and Vicious Eyeshadow and Highlighter Palette. It retailed for about 20 bucks, and this palette, like this whole collection, the, the lipsticks, the, well, the lip liner, lipstick duo, and the palettes, I almost bought the entire collection. Like, went to the website, ready to go. Again, it was in my car. I was ready to rock. And the only reason that I stopped is because I forced myself to slow down and realize that, yes, they attach something that you really enjoy from your childhood, and like, yes, you're a big fan of the marketing behind it, but ultimately, you do not need this palette. Like, of the two, it's the one that would work for you. The highlighter would probably work for my skin tone, you know, whatever. But this just is not something that I need because it's just all neutrals. And it took me a second to really slow down and look at it and separate the marketing from the purchase and really try to make that cognitive decision. And don't get me wrong, if that's why you buy something, totally fine. I have purchased so many things with just that reason in mind. And I don't have any shame in that. But when I look at this, I'm just like, Paige, <laughs> you gotta let it go eventually. And I'm glad that I did because now looking at this palette, I can definitely tell that like I wouldn't have gotten nearly as much use out of it as I would hope to. Just based off of that like red undertone that a lot of these shades have, because I don't typically wear red shades, they don't work well with my complexion, with my eyes, like they just make me look a little funky, very, very bloodshot. And so, you know, looking at it, I'm glad that I was able to slow down. I don't regret not purchasing it. And that brings us to the last item I have, which was actually part of a set, but this one really got me. Um, it was a whole set though that Makeup Revolution did, and it was their Now That's What I Call Makeup. And they did one for each decade, and the one that I'm talking about for today's video is the That's What I Call Makeup 2000s Edition. And this packaging, oh my God, this packaging almost got me so hard. This is up there with me wanting to buy that cake eyeshadow palette just because I wanted cake. This is, I wanted to buy this eyeshadow palette just so I could go back to being in like middle school and like reliving my life and like enjoying it all over again. And I just, oh my God, like it, it, it kills me to think that marketing has that strong of a hold on you. But ultimately I'm really glad that I took 10 seconds, slowed my roll and I gave it one little swipe over the picture just to see the inside because not only does the color story in here make no sense for the decade that you chose. First of all, you thought I wasn't going to clock you on that bitch. It makes no sense. Number one. Number two, this whole, I want to make it look like levels thing. <sighs> it makes me crazy because then what, what am I looking at there? I'm looking at a whole bunch of wasted packaging, a whole bunch of wasted inside space where you could have given me more eyeshadow. You could have given me something fun. You could have done anything else in that space, but instead you decided to cheat me out of what is this? Like one, hold on. I'm going to count. You cheated me out of 10 shades, 10 shades that you could have fit in there. And it's just, I, 
I have a personal issue with that. Like, I'm not a big fan of having wasted space. I want to see full space. I, I get what you're doing with the graphic and everything, but I want to see full space. I want to see it all taken up. I want to see it all being lovey-dovey with each other. And I really want to see it something cohesive that not only matches the decades, but matches the music, matches the feel, the vibe, the pants, whatever. I don't care what you're matching, but my God, if you're going to do something by the decade, y'all better do it right. And I'm saying that to any makeup company. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're some copycat company. I don't care if you are like a high-end sophisticated company. If you're going to start trying to, you know, go back through the decades and make us buy it based on our love and passion for that time, I remember that Madonna collab because I do. And I was absolutely fire pissed off upset about that. Um, it happened, what was it? Like maybe the beginning of 2019, end of 2018, something like that. Y'all, I was hot fire pissed about that whole collection because I'm sorry, if you're going to do a collab like with Madonna, one of the most iconic women of all time, a woman that liberated other women from feeling like they were nothing more than a subservient nothingness that sat at home all day. If you are going to partner with someone that matches her creed and her cred and her everything, y'all better bring me more than a nude ass light pink shadow palette. I'm sorry, no next. And that's exactly what this did to me. It made me angry. It made me feel those same things. All you did is take shades you've already had laying around in some weird ass alley somewhere and you tucked them into this palette and it just, it makes me very upset. Also, allegedly, allegedly they're laying in some weird ass alley. I'm not trying to get sued, okay? Nothing, these are just my opinions. I'm not saying nothing for fact. Allegedly, I don't know where the law will be running around during all this shit that's going on, but allegedly, allegedly. And all right, you guys, that is it for today's video. Let me know down below what you think. Is this something you would like to see quarterly? Would you like to see me kind of mix it up, do this, do makeup I'm glad I didn't buy, uh, makeup I wish I had bought, or maybe a wish list type thing where I tell you makeup that I still kind of have my eye on? Or, you know, how do you guys feel about that sort of stuff? You can let me know down below. And if you haven't checked me out yet on Instagram and on Twitter, you can do that down below. They will both be linked down in the description. Um, I am super active over on Instagram these days. So if you're looking for daily content, IGTV videos, some Sometimes I put up like, you know, filming makeup, special eye looks, that sort of thing. You can check that out over there. But above all, if you haven't subscribed yet, please be sure to do that before you leave. I do put up three videos a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and they go up bright and early between 6 and 7 a.m. my time here in good old northern Michigan. But you guys, that is it. Thank you all so, so much for watching. Please don't forget to have a great day, night, weekend, whatever it is when you're watching this, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. I can tell I didn't use my anti-feathering lip liner today. Oh, yes, I can. <laughs> oh, I was feathered. Oh, am I feathered. Oh, am I feathered. Wow. But today we are talking about 10 palettes so far in the, mo in the month of 2020. It seems, seems like the month of 2020. And I really want to see a cohesive scholar, color, oh, color scheme. Okay. Um, just based off of like that red kind of undertone that's in there. I don't often wear red shad sh shads. I don't often wear red shads.